All right, welcome again, everyone. Again, my name is Lacey Villava, and I am joined by uh, Courtney Hudson, who's going to start our first activity this morning, and Holly, who is going to do one of our next activities. Um, Courtney, I know we've got some slides to share, um, but why don't we get everybody a chance to get their supplies together if they wish. I'm gonna take a moment to do that too. I've got them all here, but I need to get them set up. So um, we'll give everybody just a moment. Sounds great. And of course, while we're waiting, if anybody has any questions or wants to uh, drop anything in the chat, feel free to go ahead and do that. I think, uh, Lacey, are you, uh, are you, you're all set? Okay, great. So uh, just real fast, I thought I would just show you. Oh yeah, there we go. Oop, a little sneak peek there, all the things we're gonna show. So today we're going to talk about and then make some Bilbo catchers. Uh, which I have to say, just the term Bilbo catcher brings me so much joy. I think it's such a fun word. Uh, and if you're wondering, uh, the term is uh, descended from a French word, uh, biblioquette. And you must excuse my French, I obviously don't speak it. Uh, but it is a uh, Bilbo catcher or bil ball and cup is another way uh, to talk about the game. And the way to our understanding, uh, it was a game that people of all ages, statuses, classes would play. It's very fun, relatively simple, uh, and there were a couple ways that you could play it. So if we see this example here, uh, this, this Miss playing with cup and ball, you can see her ball is attached to a string, and then she would kind of get the ball up onto the cup. And the cup, of course, looks more like a saucer, more like just a kind of a curved platform, uh, but that is what we're referring to with the cup. So sort of one way to play. Um, her cup is relatively small. That was probably uh, a bit more challenging of the game. Another challenging way to do it, I think, Lacey, if we go to the next slide, there was another way. You could actually take, in this example on the left, uh, the ball could actually have a small pinhole in it. And the same thing, you would use the string to get the ball up and then try to balance it on the little, uh, the little pin tip. So instead of catching the ball in a cup or on a curved platform, you have to actually get it in uh, in a little pin, which would be very difficult. I'm not sure I have the athletic powers to do that. So, uh, and then it's here, hard. I've never managed to catch it on a pin using that style of ball and cup. That's, I can't, yeah, I can't imagine. And we have another example here. It looks like the girl um, holding it in her lap uh, there on the right. She has, and Lacey, maybe you could tell me if I'm uh, wrong here. It looks like you could play that one either with the ball and cup or flip it around and do the um, ball and pin. On That's the right. It's got the same concept. I highlighted it because it's a little bit hard to see. The cup is this part here and the pin at the other end. Um, and I'm really curious about what this one's made out of. The other ones obviously look like they're made out of wood, but this one looks like it might be made out of metal, um, which it could be, but I'm having a hard time deciding what the um the ball there is made out of yeah which is it would be interesting to know because uh bilbo catchers were not just a popular 18th century game uh, there's examples all over the world japan uh, there were styles of native americans made so it's a very very popular game and when we play this one in person here um i've had some folks from mexico latin america um, telling me, oh, we've got this game at home. I'm so good at it. Yeah. It's awesome. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the universality of this game is really, really fun. Yeah. So I, and I, speaking of which, we're going to then make our own today. So. Yes, we are. And I'm going to switch over to um, my top down camera so that we can see it um, as we're making it. Courtney, you're going to make it on screen, right? Yes. and I'm following your directions. Yes, and I Perfect. will appreciate that because you'll see there's a couple things I won't be able to uh, hold up very well. So having your screen will be very helpful. Yes, all right. So that's the supplies. You'll need a uh, water bottle, or it doesn't have to be a water bottle, but some sort of plastic bottle. Uh, it could be a soda bottle, an old uh, canola oil bottle, just whatever is easy and you can cut into because we will be taking this apart. You'll also need some sort of string, or I have twine. I didn't have string, so I figure it gives it a rustic look. You can use that. We'll also need some scotch tape. I forgot to say, in a toilet paper roll, or this is actually a paper towel roll that I cut in half, so a couple options with that. 
an optional Sharpie. We'll see, it depends how exact you'd like to be. And then we're using both a pair of scissors and then I'm using a small knife today. We do have to make uh, some small incisions. So a knife or a box cutter or um, an awl, uh, just anything that uh, you can cut with. And again, this is why Lacey's gonna be a great help. I won't be able to cut uh, holding up because I'll probably slip and cut myself. So, and again, if there are any children uh, joining us today, first off, welcome, uh, but please get adult supervision using uh, the sharp pointy objects. So let's go ahead and get started. So first thing, we're going to take our water bottle and I'm just gonna go ahead and take our, mine's a water bottle, that's what I'm deferring to, but take your bottle and we'll take the cap off. Now this very first thing we're doing, turns out it is the hardest thing we're doing. So we'll go ahead and get it out of the way. I'm going to use that knife and I'm gonna make a little hole in the top of the water bottle. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna hold mine down. You can see on the screen, uh, Lacey will do it. Yep, I'm very carefully poking a hole in my water bottle cap. Um, and as Courtney kind of referred to, you don't have to be stuck with a water bottle cap. If say you've got a honey jar that's empty, you can use that that honey jar, which already has a hole in the lid. It's a little, for some reason, we're not focusing very well today. Um, you can see I just popped a little hole um, mm -hmm. in my water bottle cap, but your honey cap already comes with a hole built in. You just need to wash it out um, and tie your string uh, through the hole. Oh, that's very great. I did not know yeah. that. And then also, because I have twine, it's a little thicker. Um, so I, I poked a hole, but to make it bigger, I'm also gonna use my scissors and I'm just gonna use it to kind of kind of pull around and make that hole a little bigger uh, without having to use the knife too much, kind of right. minimize that risk of, of cutting myself. And my, my scissor points are uh, pretty big, so I decided not to use them. A little physics. So again, just adapt whatever tools you have. Okay, so now we have a, uh, a cap with a hole in it. Set it down. And we're gonna take that string or that twine, whatever you're using, and we want about a foot of it. If you happen to cut it a little too long, that's okay. You can always go back and shorten it. Uh, so I have my, my twine here and I'm gonna cut, I'm guessing about a foot. If you would like, you may measure it. More of an eyeballer. So just like to figure it out. And then we'll take that string or twine and we're gonna stick it through the water bottle cap like so. And then we're just gonna tie a knot to secure this. And this string and cap combination is going to be our bilbo, it's going to be our, our ball, mm -hmm. basically what we'll be catching in yeah. our pool catcher. And my... Courtney, double, you double knotted yours, right Courtney? I did, yes. I am too, just for security. If your hole in your cap ends up being really big, you can see I made a pretty small one. But if your hole ends up pretty big, you can also tie your string around the, the side like this to get some extra security so that your hole your knot doesn't pull through the hole. Beautiful. Here we go. All right, what ne what's next, Courtney? So basically we have our, our Bilbo and we're gonna go ahead and just set this aside for now. So there we go. And, and we're going to come back getting... to our water or our bottle, whatever you are using. Courtney and I also both used twine and today. Lacey, are you but... showing a string for us? Yes. A... This is another option. If you've got leftover yarn at home, this works great oh, too. Okay. Um, so for our, our bottle, we're going to cut this open and deconstruct this a little bit to make our cup. Now, you kind of, the, the, the top of your bottle, whatever you're using, you're going to measure about three fingers down and that's going to be the width of the cup. So I'm going to use my Sharpie and I'm just going to make a couple marks about three fingers down like so. And this will give me a guideline for getting this cut open. So you can see I'm just kind of not too worried about being super exact Again, I don't mind eyeballing because you have the little marks. Nope, we can't see my mark. It's too light. Let me get a different marker. There we go. There you go. And then once again, I'm going to use, my scissors do not have a sharp point, so I'm going to use my little knife. I'm going to set this down so I don't cut myself, and I'm just going to make a little incision with that knife. Yep. 
And we're doing the same thing here on mine. You see I the incision. My bottle is a little floppier than Courtney's though, so it's, <laughs> there we go, there it went. Uh, so then once I have that, then I'll go ahead and use my scissors, use that in point, and go ahead and cut around roughly where I made those marks with the Sharpie, so. And if your bottle has ridges like mine, you can just follow along one of those ridges. There you go. Ridges. Okay. It's down. So I have now separated. So the rest of this we're going to just set aside. But this is our going to be our cup. So now we'll take our cup. We're going to take our little bilbo, and we're going to stick the the end of the string that does not have the cap. We're gonna stick it through the side that we just cut off. So you're gonna stick it through the large side. That makes sense. And it's going to come out the bottom through the, um, kind of the, on this, the drinking part, the narrow part. The neck. The neck, thank you. Yes. Words. That's all right. And uh, once it's through, you're gonna secure it around. So I'm gonna to try to tie this, folding this up. This is a little, a little tricky. You can also watch it on the overhead cam. Um, I've got it down there on screen. Another thing to think about is that you might also consider, um, you can tie it around the neck before you put your ball on, your bilbo, um, which might make it a little bit easier. Um, sorry, Courtney, we I totally forgot to tell you about that. My fault. That's good. I'm all about, all about the teamwork. And then I'm, also, I'm not a great knot tire. I will also tell you that. So I'm going to use a little bit of tape to help secure my knot to the neck of the bottle here. So I'm going to come around just like so. Just kind of taping that twine on. There we go. Okay. There we go. And around. It looks like, looks like, Lacey, you have your secured? Yes, I do. Hey, and so we are so close. You can see we have a we have a ball, we have a cup. We just need a handle. So that's where that either that toilet paper or that paper towel roll. We're just gonna stick that that neck of the bottle. Just go inside the paper towel. And once again, handy dandy tape. It's gonna tape it around. And of course, oh, I can see that Lacey is decorating hers. Does that say summer? Summer sat. Summer Saturdays, 2020. So of course you can uh, use markers on the paper parts. Um, markers will of course wash off the plastic part. So you can use stickers, you can paint it. Uh, you can use, I think there's that colored duct tape, which is always fun. Uh, so there's a lot of ways that you can decorate this. Colored um, painter's tape or washi tape is also a great way to decorate. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tape my cap on just a little bit differently than Courtney did. Um, Courtney ran her tape around. I'm going to run mine this direction and both ways work. So mine's hard to see because it's clear plastic tape, but it goes vertically on and I think that holds it very well. And I just use two little pieces of tape and ta-da. There you go. Well, that's less tape than I need. That's, that's all right. So now you have it. Both ways work. Now, Lacey, can you get yours to work? Let's see if I can catch mine. I think I'm gonna have to flip cameras. I don't think I can do it underneath the overhead cam. So give me just a sec. Okay, let me see if I can, uh, ah, there we go, there we go. I got one, I think I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead. Uh, and if anybody has uh, made one that they'd like to share, or if they have any questions, uh, you can turn on your, your video and share your bubble catcher or drop any questions you may have in the chat. Um, but otherwise, uh, very fun game. One more little- If thing. I can make it. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see. Uh, I do admit I have a lot of practice. Okay, all right. Not as well practiced. <laughs> That's all right. Ta-da! Oh, all right. Well, thank you so much, Lacey. My pleasure. So um, thank you, Courtney, for introducing us to that wonderful game. Um, I will admit I have played it quite a lot in my time in um, 18th century historic sites. It's super, super popular. Um, we're going to move on though to our next game, um, which is a really fun one that first got recorded in um, 1833. So it's a little bit out of our time frame. 
Um, but Holly is going to introduce us to a game called The Elements. Um, if you wish, um, you may care to have some supplies. Um, the original calls for a clean handkerchief. Uh, but you do not, do not need this to play this game today. All right, Holly, are you ready to get started? I am good to go. Okay. Okay, so this game is called Elements. And the reason that it's called Elements is because you, throughout the course of the game, are going to be naming creatures or animals that belong in these different elements, like earth, air, water, and fire. So this is a really fun game, but it's gonna be a little different um, on our Zoom version because usually you would take your group and you would get in a circle and back then they would have a handkerchief that they would throw from person to person. But today you can pretty much throw anything that you have, like a ball, um, a tennis ball, something that's like super soft and yeah, exactly, Courtney. Like you can throw anything pretty much. Just don't hurt anyone in the process. Um, a bean bag. <laughs> yeah, a bean bag. That's also a really good idea. Um, so the way that we are going to play this game today is that I will be calling out someone's name and then an element. So for example, if I were to say Lacey and then say Earth, it is in Lacey's job to name an element or name a creature that roams the earth. So, for example, she were to say dog, um, then, you know, she's not out of the game. She named an animal and then it would be her turn to call out someone else's name and yell another type of element. Now we're going to try to be specific as possible because, um, you know, if someone yells out or calls fish, there are so many different types of fish, right? So um, just try to be as specific as possible. And um, you have to name a creature within 10 seconds of getting your name called out. And we'll start in our Zoom version. We'll count to 10 using our fingers. Exactly. Um, so if everybody feels comfortable, us at Gunston Hall, we are going to do a little test run and see how this works out. So if Lacey- Bernie, you're you are with us too. Yes, if you, anybody else wants to play, like chime on in. Um, uh, also, um, Holly, I missed this. If somebody repeats an animal, what happens? Then that is a good thing to point out. So if Lacey says dog and then down the line, Courtney also says dog, then Courtney is out because Lacey had already said that animal. So um, you just make sure you have to pay attention to what other people are saying and do your best to remember. But I know that that's going to be quite difficult if we start speeding the game up a little bit. Okay, so is everyone ready? Lacey, Courtney? Awesome. So, Courtney, air, bird. Great. <laughs> and I now say like, lacy water. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, an electric eel. Ooh. See, that's good. That's being specific. <laughs> specific. I see. I see. Courtney, uh -huh. air, butterfly, mm -hmm. uh, holly, earth, brown bear, nice. uh, lacy, um, water. Oh, you gave me water again. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. Um, puffer fish. Nice. Um, holly, fire. See, 
that is one thing I forgot to mention in the beginning is that if someone says fire, there are no creatures or animals that can survive in fire, right? So you just got to be silent for 10 seconds and not say anything at all. Um, so that is supposed to kind of trip you up as you continue to play this game as it's very fast paced. Um, so I shall continue. I'm going, Courtney, let's go with uh, Earth. Why is this so hard? <laughs> uh, Jackrabbit. Nice. nice, that's a good one. And Holly, I'm gonna send it back to you. Uh, water. Blowfish. <laughs> <laughs> I think Lacey said pufferfish. I yeah. did. Okay, is that a different thing? Fish. They're different. So okay, there we go. They're different. Mm -hmm. So we could also get a little bit even more specific with our elements, like um, forest, tropical forest, desert, um, fresh water, salt water, grasslands, that sort of thing. Because then it, if you find that earth, air, water, and fire are a little bit too simple, um, you can try to stump the people in your group even more so. So Lacey and Courtney, do you want to try that version? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Yep. So I'll start with Courtney and say desert. R rattlesnake. Mm. Okay. And uh, Lacey, do fresh water. Mm. Mm -hmm. Trout. Rainbow trout. <laughs> um, Holly. Rainforest. A tree frog? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Is anyone who's participating, would anybody who is participating like to uh, play along with us? If you wish, you can. Just unmute yourself, we'll add you to the list. Um, if you wish to leave your video off, you can. Um, if you do turn your video on, your video may be recorded as a part of the recording for this program. We'll play one more round, and then I know I need to let Holly go because she's got other things she has to do today. If you don't want to play with us, that's totally fine, but it would be something that's super fun to play with family or friends. Mm -hmm. Even if you like come together and have like a little socially distant gathering, this is something that you could even do. You won't have to toss a ball. You'll just have to call out someone's name and an element. So I'm totally big... playing this with my family the next time we have a Zoom call. Yes, I think yeah. it's great. I want to play with my nieces and nephews, yes. Yeah. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. All right, Holly, you want to start another round for us? Sure. Okay, so Courtney and uh, like Antarctica snowy places. <laughs> <laughs> Antarctica snowy places. Um, polar bear. Nice job. I live in snowy places. <laughs> Um, Lacey, Savannah, Grassland. Spotted hyenas. Ooh, you were ready for that. She was. Uh, you said savannas, and yeah, that was the first thing that came to my brain. <laughs> <laughs> um, Holly. Hmm. Ocean. A starfish. Nice. Uh, Lacy. Tropical forest. A rainforest. Oh, forest. Um, a blue macaw. Mm -hmm. or what? <laughs> a blue macaw. Have you never seen a blue macaw? It's a kind of parrot. They're beautiful. They're so pretty. They're like screaming electric blue. They're really cool. Oh, that's cool. 
Uh, Courtney. Um, plains, like the Midwestern Plains. Okay. Midwestern Plains antelope. Awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Polly, let's go back to air. I'm thinking yeah. of a way to make air. Um, seagull. Seagull. Uh, Lacey, forest. Hmm. <laughs> Blue tailed skinks. Blue tail what? Skinks. You've seen them, Holly. We have them here at Gunston Hall, too. Oh, the little lizard thing? Little lizards. Oh, okay, yeah. I got it. Yeah, they're about, they're usually about this long, and they've got a bright blue tail, um, a little lighter than the blue on our logo. Yes, they're very mischievous. Yes, they are. They like to get in the building here. It's very exciting. <laughs> um... Let's do like one more each. So we'll pass it around the circle. Does that make sense? And then we'll let you go, Holly. Awesome. That sounds great. So Holly, um, the Arctic Circle. Can I just say penguin? <laughs> <laughs> I can't name a specific penguin. King, Emperor, Rock, uh, King, King Penguin. King Penguin. Sounds good. <laughs> Lacey's an expert at this game, apparently. <laughs> expert on animals. It's great. I, and I watch a lot of Nat Geo type things. And it's you know, like, that's good. Yeah. Okay, and Courtney, I'm going to leave it off to you and say salt water. Salt water. Uh, uh, Chinook salmon. Nice. Oh, now I'm hungry, Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> salmon. <laughs> All right. And then um, I'm going to end it off with Lacey. Okay. Uh, Lacey, I had something for this. Oh, uh, like alpine, like high mountain terrain. <gasps> mountain goats. <laughs> there you go well, awesome nothing. well fantastic well, um, thank you so much for joining us today holly i know you've got to run um, thank you guys for those of you who are still participating with us in other places we've got one more activity on the schedule today um and i'm gonna throw up a um, a couple of images on the screen so that we can uh take a look at them so this last activity um, involves this really awesome character here who we've got on screen. His name is Hotchpotch. Um, Hotchpotch is a character um, that shows up in um, activities teaching kids their alphabet. Um, and what we see here is a set of cards that Colonial Williamsburg produced a number of years ago um, showing Hotchpotch. Um, but the original, um, and I couldn't get an image of it to share with you today, the original of Hotch Patch um, is on a puzzle from the 18th century, which is really, really cool. Um, so this was a, a tool used to teach kids um, their alphabet. Um, he's really flexible, he's really mobile, and you can see he's contorted his body into the shape of an F. Now, F's not a particularly hard letter to shape oneself into, but he does uh, managed to get some other really complex ones. Um, and for um, the alphabet in the 18th century, it's also fun to know that oftentimes you will not see um, either a J or a U in the alphabet. Seems kind of weird, right? J's and I's were used interchangeably in many cases uh, because they look very similar in cursive. And U and V were also used interchangeably because in cursive, 
they also look very similar. So you have to use um, some ingenuity um, and creativity when reading um, 18th century script sometimes. Uh, but you also have to use some ingenuity and some um, brain teasing because they also use something that's called a long S. And I think on one of these future slides, we will see a long S incorporated, um, but probably not on too terribly many. Um, I don't actually remember which ones I picked, but we are going to, um, we are going to uh, go through a series of slides with a bunch of these hodgepodge cards on them. And if you're willing to play along, we are going to pretend to be hodgepodge and we're going to try to make some letters of the alphabet. So let's get started. All right, let's see what our first one is here. B, by a bright thought to a B he has brought. So all right, so let's see if we can get our Bs going. You can see that, that hodgepodge, he's got his hands tucked really interestingly. Uh, Courtney, I see you've got your fingers pointed together. I'm noticing that he's got his, his hands clasped. He's also got his bottom foot um, doing the arc of the B with his toe pointed like ballerina style. I'm not sure I can get my foot to flex like that in my shoe. And he's also got his head tucked down so that it, break, it doesn't break the arc of the B. All right, let's see what's next. Oh, anybody may know he's in the form of an O. I see you there, Courtney, just holding your hands up. I'm going to see if I can not fall off the table. Ugh. And do our, our O. We can see just the tips of Hotchpotch's toes on the card, but he's laying flat on his back and holding his arms above his head. Yes, well, I like how you do that because when I hold it up, my head's in the way, so it's not right. Really, oh, so when you lay down, yeah. Yes, I don't normally recommend sitting on top of tables, but there was nowhere else you were going to be able to see me. Mm -hmm. All right, what's next? K. Ooh, I love the way he's got his fingers pointed. Seems not not necessarily. Um part of the K? I don't know. I'm figuring, trying to figure that one out. So he's got his front arm up and his back arm down by his side. Maybe he's trying to do the serif. If you look at the top of the K, oh, that this could little be. bit is called the serif. And we've got serifs on, on all parts of the Ks and his feet are doing the bottom serif and his hat doing the other which I don't have does the top one of the top serifs and his fingers do the other one. I like cool. that. Yeah. Great. Ooh. L. Okay. I'm making an L. You can't really tell. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can see my L bottom as well. <laughs> serif. My head is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, his, head, his hat is doing the serif on the top again. Oh, he's got his feet crossed. Very dainty. Yeah. And here are some of our long S's on the text too. This one says, L sits him down easy and hopes for to please ye. You can see we've got short S's and long S's on this one. The sit easy and please all have long S's, uh, but the hopes has a short S. And that's really typical for the short S to be at the end of a sentence. Or sorry, at the end of a word. All right, let's see, do I have any others? I think that is the last one, which I can see we're a little early. So I've got a treat for those of you who are still with us. We've got some other games. There are lots and lots and lots of games uh, that were played in the 18th century. Um, some of them required essentially no supplies whatsoever. Some of them required a lot of supplies. Um, last time we did our game, Summer Saturday, um, we played a game called Buzz, um, which I had a lot of fun with. I don't know about you, Courtney. I, I did have fun. It's a, it's, I, it's a lot of numbers. It's a lot of numbers. <laughs> do, you want to tell, do you want to tell our audience a little bit about what Buzz is? Yeah, let's see if I can remember. So uh, 
you pick a um, a number, and usually it's played with with multiples of seven. Correct. And so uh, we would go back and forth. However, when people are in your group, and one person says one, the next person says two, so on and so on. But when you get to number seven, instead of saying seven, you say buzz. Mm -hmm. Two ways you can play it. You can do it anytime there's a seven in the number. So for example, seven, 17, 27, or you mm -hmm. can do it the hard way, which is you also add in multiples of seven. That's right. right? So it'd be seven, 14, 17, and 21. Right, it keeps going. So right. you have to know your multiplication tables. <laughs> I was really surprised when we played this the last time that we got all the way up to 50 with all three of us playing it. Yep, that was uh, the stars aligned. I was, yes, I was, I was very pleased, but I was also very surprised. I was so, <laughs> so that's one game um, that requires very little supplies. Um, there's another one that I love playing with kids, and I cannot, for the life of me, I apologize, remember the 18th century title, um, but I, I call it Find the Object. Um, and this game um, requires just one thing. Um, one object and you you can pick what it is. I often use a spool of thread, uh, but you could use a water bottle cap or a baseball or anything that you have around the house. Um, you stash the object in plain sight so everybody can see the object in theory, but they have to locate it. So for example, I could hide it on the ledge of the bookshelf behind me drop it there when, when nobody's looking, everybody closes their eyes while the object is being hidden. Um, I drop it over there on the bookshelf and then everybody has to go find it. But rather than moving it or doing anything with it, once they see it without saying anything, they sit down, indicating that they have found the object. Um, and it's a super easy, really quiet game um, that can be played with kids of all ages. I've had kids um, between the ages of eight and 16 super excited to play this game. They can't wait to play it and they are desperate to know when it's their turn to hide the object. It's, it's really awesome and I love, love playing that one. Um, so those are some that you guys can take home um, and we have one other that I want to introduce you to today. Um, called Thus Says the Grand Mufti. Um, this is also from that same book that um, Holly's Game the Elements is from. Um, one person um, is the Grand Mufti and he or she um, makes a motion um, at, um, at whatever moment. Um, and um, and as he is, as this person is making the motion, they say, "Thus says the Grand Mufti," and everybody follows along. So, for example, Courtney, I'm going to make a motion and say, "Thus says the Grand Mufti," and you do the same thing. Um, Thus says the Grand Mufti. I Perfect. do it. You okay? All yeah. Right. Same thing. Uh, okay. But if I, and you hold it, okay. and if I make a motion, um, but I don't say the magic words. I don't do, don't it. do like it. Simon Says. Yeah, it's, very, it's a very old version of Simon Says. Um, and in the 18th century, in the 18th and early 19th century, um, when, um, this game was played if um, if you made a mistake, if you made the wrong motion, or if you um, um, made the motion when so says the Grand Mufti isn't said, um, then you paid a forfeit. Um, today, of course, typically when you're playing Simon Says, if you do something that Simon doesn't say, you're out. But in the 18th century, they, they paid a forfeit and then they were back in the game. Um, and paying a forfeit could be anything from, like when we played Buzz last time and we made a mistake, um, we put a finger on our nose. Yeah. 
Um, uh, it could also be running around the house three times. It could be um, needing to curtsy, get up and curtsy to everybody who walked in the room for the next three hours. It could be any number of things and they created them and made them, made them so. Um, do you want to give the game a little bit more of a try, Courtney? Sure, I'll do my best. Awesome. All right. Would you like to be the Grand Mufti? Okay, I will take on this burden. Sounds good. Okay, so I just do, I, I say I'm the Grand Mufti as I make the, the whatever symbol. You say, so says, so says, so says the Grand Mufti. Okay. So, so says the Grand Mufti. So says the Grand Mufti. So says the Grand Mufti. And for those of you who have speak review on, as Courtney is doing all of these things and saying, so says the Grand Mufti, I am doing them along. Yes, but then you didn't do this one because I didn't say it. Um, I did do it! Oh! Okay. Oh. <laughs> I waved both hands. Uh, I got so engaged. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's another easy one um, that you can uh, take home with you. Um, it looks like we're uh, getting close to end of time. And that is, those are our games for the day. Um, if you have any thoughts or questions, you're welcome to type them into the chat. Let us know that you have them or unmute yourself and shout them out. Um, we would love to address them for you online. Um, and while everyone is thinking about any thoughts or questions that they might have, let me tell you a little bit about our upcoming Summer Saturdays. So we're still in the midst of Summer Saturdays. Uh, we've got just a few more coming up. Um, next week um, is our last food themed Summer Saturday of the summer. Um, we will be talking about tenant farmers and the food that was available to them. Also what their farms looked like. We have another garden themed summer Saturday coming up and I'm really excited about that one because we're partnering with Bartram's Garden in Philadelphia, which is a place that George Mason visited when he was alive. Um, so we're, we've got the curator of Bartram's Garden joining us for that program. Um, and we've got another games themed summer Saturday. As I mentioned earlier, all of our summer Saturdays are recorded and they are hosted on our website. Um, if all goes well, this summer Saturday should be on our um, website uh, starting this afternoon. If not, it will go up tomorrow morning. So thank you so much everybody for joining us today. We really appreciate that you spent some of your Saturday morning with us and we hope to have you at a future summer Saturday or virtual program and we look forward to the opportunity to bring you back here to Gunston Hall um, either for a visit in 2020 or for a public program at some point in the future.